Hello everyone, welcome to Power2D presentation. In this video, I'll be talking about the concepts and ideas behind the Power2D. And we start with a simple question that uh, what actually Power2D is. Well, Power2D is a scripted plugin that works on 3D Studio Max and 3D Studio Max design. So if you're not familiar with 3D Studio Max, then I would suggest you to uh, check the 3D Studio Max documentation and see if you're interested in learning the software. But if you already know 3D Studio Max, then you probably know what is a 3ds Max plugin. A plugin is a small program that works on other applications and it extends the functionality of the main application. Well, since Part 3D is a plugin, then the question is what this plugin is adding to main 3D Studio Max program. 3D Studio Max has one of the best scripting language, which called uh, MaxScript. And using MaxScript, users can do things that uh, potentially may not be possible with the main functions of the program. But if you don't know how to write codes and programs, then, then it might be difficult for you to to work with MaxScript. And here Power3D comes to help to write codes within 3D Max uh, without having a deep knowledge in programming. Now let's see what kind of program you can you can write with Power. Among all the type of program and codes that uh, you can do with MaxScript, uh, there is only one type of program that you can write with Power. And that type of program is called controllers. Well it might look a little disappointing since you you can only design uh, one kind of program but if you get to know what actually controllers can do in 3d max then only you realize what you can do with power 3 now let's uh, talk about the controllers well in 3d studio max you create things that known as objects these objects have different properties a property is kind of value that uh, describe different aspects of the, an object. And what is controlling a value of a property and lets user to change it is a controller. So a controller has a very important role in 3D Max and it's responsible for changing the value of an object property. Well, let's, let's give an example. Consider a, a very simple object in 3D Studio Max, which can be a box. A box has a different kind of properties. Mainly properties are grouped in two different categories. The first category is transformation properties, which contains the position, rotation, and the scale of the object. Using these properties, you can move, rotate, and scale an object. And there are other groups of properties that uh, they call object properties, and they represent the parameters of an object that can deal with the geometry or different attributes of an object. In this case, a box has a length, width, height as uh, different size parameters, and length segments, width segments, and height segments as um, integer values that controls the density of the mesh. And now let's talk about the controller and uh, see how the controller can change a property. Well, basically, controllers are nothing more than a piece of program that takes a series of uh, inputs and gives a series of outputs. And we will see in the next slide that these inputs and outputs can be in different types. In this example, this controller is taking four of different value as inputs and it's making one single value as output. Sometimes the controller can generate more than one type of values, but so far, in current version of the Para3D, we only deal with one single output. What you're going to do with Para3D is to design such a controller that takes some inputs and creates an output. Having said that, there are different types of values. Now we're just going to do a few of them that are being used in Para3D. Uh, however, there are more types than what we are presenting here in MaxScript. But in Power3D, we are just dealing with these five types. The first type is a scalar, and, uh, and it can refer to integer number, or float number, or a length, uh, or an angle in degree. A vector type that can represent the position or the scale. Matrix that represent the uh, transformation of an object. 
which includes the rotation, position, and scale all together. And these three types are related to properties and controllers. The, the remaining two types are only uh, available in controllers in Para3D. Boolean type, which represents true and false, an object that uh, that means uh, you can pass an object through a value to a controller. These objects can be shapes or uh, different array members. Now here we take a look at a simple example of Para3D structure that uh, includes a Para3D node, which is representing the object property, and a controller that uh, controls the uh, one of the property of the objects. In this example, in the left side, we have para node, which is showing uh, the list of properties uh, that is available to you para 3D from a single box, and a controller that is going to control the value of the position. So that's all that you do in para 3D. You create controllers that control the different properties of objects. But you should know that the controllers itself can be considered as max object and they have their own property. In this case, you can have a graph like this. You can have a controller that is controlling a property of an object and itself being controlled by another controller. Since this controller itself is a max object and has got different properties. And this makes part 3D very strong tool because it allows you to combine controllers and make new controllers. In Para2D, there is one important rule that what controllers is creating in terms of output, it should be the same type as a property. So for example, if a property is in type of vector, the controller which is going to control it has to be in the same type. Here I'm going to finish this presentation by showing two more slides that represent the, the process of the updating controllers and how controllers are changing the value of properties in Para3D. When you use Para3D to create static models or basically non-animated uh, models, this is what's going to happen. After you use Para3D controllers to create a small program, Para3D starts creating max script controllers for each single property. Once you press the update button, Para3D starts evaluating each of max controllers and then update the object property according to the result. In this case, you always need Para3D installed on your machine because without the Para3D, these max script controllers cannot be evaluated. But when you're dealing with animations, you're basically doing the dynamic parametric controllers. When you press animate button, Para3D will assign each max script controller to the object property directly. So in this case, you may don't need to have the Para3D in your machine to, to see the result. Unless there is a piece of code that is, uh, is embedded in the program, and this max script controllers needs to, to read that code from there. I hope this short presentation uh, can help you to understand the basics of Para3D. I'll try to come with a few uh, short video practicing some basics of Para3D to get better uh, understanding of these concepts. Thank you for watching and see you next time.